Alright, wait. Alright, okay, so hello dears. Ayan, hello and hello and good day. Hello, how are you all doing? Ayan, hello. I hope you're all doing fine and I hope you're all doing great. And yes, I welcome you again to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in Immunology and Serology. And for this lecture, what we're going to talk about now are your labeled immunoassays. Alright, okay, so before we start, no, medyo kalma lang, okay? Hey, medyo, ako sa research room, no? I, I'm sure you all know where that is. And medyo, it's very... Limbyo na kayo siya din. <laughs> like, nahawa na siya and all that. Okay, but anyway. Alright, so, uh, medyo na, ano lang ko sa environment, na shocked. But anyway, alright, so again, these are your labeled immunoassays. Nako, sana all my label. <laughs> alright, okay. So, di ba, um, bahalag asa na subject, it's really, really emphasized that as medtechs, ganahan kita na na, I label. Oh, so, sa IS, yes, kailangan na i-label na itong amino assays. Um, sa itong mga other, of course, other um, fields in the medtech, dapat itong specimen, dapat na i-label. Okay, kung wala, mm, yes, reject. Okay, so kayo dyan, sa mga gusto, mga, mga mahilig dyan na mga walang labels, nako, 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 medtech ka pa ba? Charot na. Okay, alright, anyway. Alright, so we're going to talk about na the labeled amino assays. Um, before this, the pre-recorded lecture, our last pre-recorded lecture was on EBV, Epstein-Barr virus serology. And I mentioned there that the next topic, um, we're now going to focus on another type of amino assays. And then after this you know, brief introduction of, uh, after this lecture rather, on labeled amino assays, we'll then continue now with the remaining topics in IS, um, especially uh, focusing on the diseases that can be diagnosed using these types of amino acids. Actually, the previous diseases then from group A strep, rheumatoid arthritis, and all that, they can also be detected using labeled amino acids. All right? But the diseases that we will discuss after this, uh, after this lecture on how to diagnose those diseases, the primary types of tests that they use are usually labeled amino acids. That's why para murag na bahig siya ba na okay so we started with precipitation agglutination di ba reactions and then after that we then discuss the different diseases that can be diagnosed using those types of reactions do, using those types of principles okay so nagets lang niyo and then after we then discuss labeled amino acids no the different types of labeled amino acids and then we then discuss the different diseases different um, pathogens ba or substances that can be detected using labeled amino acids. So I hope na gets na ang uh, flow, no? <laughs> and actually, we're almost done now with IS. I think this is midway na, Jude. I think mga pila na lang katopics. HIV serology, HEPA B, syphilis, salmonella, other topics. Ah, medyo mataas -taas pa pala. But anyway, all right, we're almost done. Okay. And this lecture, guys, this is... <laughs> This is the topic that I'm very, very much afraid of. I, I fear the most because this is the topic that I, that, I really fear the most, most because the complex, uh, the concepts here rather, are quite complex um, and medyo um, quite, quite too much to handle or to internalize. All right. So again, that's why I advise, piece of advice lang that um, yeah try to slowly you no know, internalize this and um, the diagrams the illustrations here provided by Sir Jemu Guasa really can help us in like what this is one of the key to understand that, that this lesson is that you look at the diagrams and or the illustrations you no know, and that would really really help you promise as in it helped me during my third year some in the lesson because I hate it okay. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure it will also help you, know. So thank you, Sir Jamu, for this. Um, but really, yes, the drawings, the illustrations will help you. Um, I think one of the key um, techniques then to master IS or that you can really appreciate, no, the lesson, the lessons in IS is that you look into the di diagrams, no, uh, the illustrations on the, the reactions, precipitation, agglutination, labeled amino acids. They can really, really help you understand the concept of your um, these labeled amino assays or these concepts no all right so i hope i hope lang good ma deliver na ko i apologize daan if na yung mga concepts na dili you know wala na ako na deliver tarong again i'm only human medyo taya na po akong knowledge guys yes. <laughs> i need to review pa i need to review again because you know i'm not i'm not smart naman so uh, <laughs> so again yeah apologize lang daan apologies daan but i hope i hope ma deliver lang gina ko siya all right okay and 
sa pamahal. Actually, some of you are, have been my students in um, AUBF, Analysis of Green and Body Fluids, last SEM. And ha I have already introduced a type of amino assay, labeled amino assay there. And <laughs> if you can remember, sa mga students dyan, na, na students ako last SEM sa AUBF, I kept on saying, na, guys, this is one of the topics that I really hate, that I really fear to discuss. And now, I was given this topic, <laughs> this subject. Okay, sige na lang, let's push. Uh, but yeah, so... Kato ako mga students last sa UBF, pregnancy testing, the pregnancy kits, yes. That's another type of um, labeled amino acid. And we're going to discuss that later. Okay, so, um, yeah, so more in-depth na. And you'll be introduced to the different types of labeled amino acids. Okay, so, kalma lang tadera guys ha. So, please bear with me lang. Okay, I'll, I'm trying to do my best then to really impart. But I hope, I hope lang yun na mo yung learn Nara mo yung learn after this. Okay? So, Lord be with me. Yes, Jesus be with me. <laughs> okay, alright. Alright, so again, these are, again, again, these are <laughs> puberty chart. Again, these are labeled amino acids. Now, as mentioned, if you can recall in our lecture on agglutination and precipitation reactions, these two type of reactions are known as unlabeled. Okay, ayan. So, these are unlabeled amino acids. Diba, we use precipitation and agglutination reactions to visualize antigen antibody reactions. And aside from that, we use those reactions so that, uh, to apply in amino acids. Diba? So precipitation and agglutination. Uh, but these two types of reactions, they are considered as unlabeled. Okay, so when you say unlabeled, <clears throat> You don't need a label. Ayan. So, mga gusto dyan <laughs> na happy lang, walang label. Ayan. Baka precipitation, agglutination ka. Okay. Alright. Uh, unlabeled. Because it does not use any label. It does not use any enzyme. It does not use any fluorophore, fluorescent material. It does not use any chemical reaction. So that the antigen antibody reaction will be visualized. What happens during precipitation and agglutination reactions, mga good, diba? If you can recall, there's an antigen, there's an antibody, they react together, and then the reaction can be visualized. Example, agglutination, diba? clumping, or precipitation, nine precipitates, diba? So, you can already see the reaction, okay? Whereas for labeled amino acids, <clears throat> we put labels. Ayan, so mga gusto dyan, ha? seryoso, long-term relationship, committed, commitment, sana all, ready for commitment, charot. Eto, this is for you, labeled amino acids. We add labels, example, enzymes, we add fluorescent, we add radioisotopes, yes, we add chemicals, whatever, so that we can visualize the binding that occurred between antigen and antibody. Alright, so, so what is the importance of these labeled amino acids? Labeled amino acids usually, uh, they were brought about or they were invented so that um, we can detect, or they're usually, there are really four um, antigens and antibodies that are in small concentration. Kay usually, kay your antigen, uh, your precipitation and agglutination reactions, they work best, okay, or you can visualize the reaction only if the concentration of your antigen and antibody are quite high, okay? So, they're not quite sensitive, okay? So, that's why, you know, scientists before, yes, with their big brains, <laughs> big brain energy, big D energy, charot, <laughs> they thought about formulating another type of test or another type of amino assays that can detect these antigens or antibodies, even if they are in small concentrations. Hence, your labeled amino assays. All right? And through these labeled amino assays, there have been a lot of um, diseases, no? pathogens that were detected. HIV, you have HEPA B, yes, and all that. So, yeah. So, primarily, your labeled amino assays, good. They are very, very important, um, or they can be of great help in diagnosing diseases or pathogens, especially when they are in low concentrations. Okay, so dito ang history, dito siya nag-start. Alright, but again, these labeled amino acids usually are also one of the type, most of the types of amino acids that have been used um, in routine lab, in, in hospitals and all. So these type of labeled amino acids na, uh, these type of amino acids rather, are usually ang ginaperform din sa lab. Mga machines, no? Sa lab, usually they use these types of amino acids, mga labeled amino acids. Why? Because they are really sensitive and they can also be very specific. Alright? Okay, ayan. So that's a brief <laughs> introduction lang of your um, labeled amino acids. Okay? So I hope na gets lang. Alright. Now, again, your labeled amino acids, as mentioned, designed for antigens, antibodies, small in size, or present in very low concentrations. And how do we determine that? It's indirect. Diba? Again, as mentioned, precipitation, agglutination, we can visualize directly the reaction through 
you know, agglutination like nigh clumping or precipitation precipitates. Whereas for labeled amino acids, that's why they are named labeled, nasa lang label, because there is a labeled reactant that is attached, okay, or that is put on the reaction so that the reaction will be visualized, okay? So the labeled reactant, again, can vary from enzymes but to radioisotopes and we'll, <laughs> we'll go to that individually later. All right, okay. And the substance to be measured is considered to be an analyte. It could be an antigen. It could even be an antibody. Aside from that, it can also even mga, it can also even be mga hormones, drugs, yes, tumor markers, tumor markers, okay, tumor markers, and many other substances. So as you can see, your labeled amino acids are very put, very versatile. Ah? <laughs> yes, versa, charot. Sino mga versa dyan, charot, okay. So they are very, uh, it, they are, these types of amino acids are very versatile and wide range. It can offer a wide range of detection you know, from antigens, antibodies, even to other biological substances found in your body like tumor macus, mga viral antigens, and even mga hormones, diba? So that's why um, labeled amino acids are very much gaining importance, very much gaining popularity in the routine lab nowadays. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Now we go now to the different formats, no? So dash mga different formats. Like, mugamit ba siya? Nsa yung font size? Is it twelve? Mugamit ba siya? Arial narrow as font? Charot. Okay. All right. So we got we go now to different types. Um, types they have labeled amino acids, and the first one is based on format. And the first type based on format is competitive amino acids. So when I say competitive, by the name itself, competitive. <laughs> So, now it's competition. So, mga friends ni John, competitive amino acid ba na sila? Charot. Okay, so why do we say it's competitive? It's because all the reactants, they are mixed simultaneously and they compete for limited binding sites. Ayan. So, what do you mean by reactants? Both the labeled antigen, okay, so example. So, let's say, hugaw mo niya. Okay. So, let's say you have your AG. This is, this is the patient antigen, ha? And this is your labeled antigen, my asterisk. Ayan, so labeled. Okay. And then in your test tube, let's say you have antibodies. Ay, sorry, mali. Okay. Ayan. So both of them, they are added here. Okay. And both of them, they compete. Ayan, so paunhanay sila. Magpaunhanay sila sa limited binding sites of your antibody na naasa imuhang test tube or sa microtiter plates or wherever. Okay? That's why it's competition. Competitive. Okay? Alright. And the amount of bound label is inversely proportional to the concentration of the labeled antigen. And the more label detected, the less there is a patient antigen. Okay, why? Let's say you have kani, muni siya mga antibody sites. Okay. Now, let's say that your antigen, patient antigen, is low. And low. So, therefore, therefore, ang mubaindra sa imuhang limited binding sites, let's say, duhara ka human or patient antigen. So, the remaining binding sites, kanina adere, so, kinsa na may mubaind? Ang labeled antigen. So, therefore, pila mani? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 ka antigen labeled. Labeled antigen na detect. So let's say mo niya na detect sa imuhang machine, it means that since mas daghan mang antigen na labeled ang na detect, that means that mas gamay di ay ang antigen na present sa imuhang patient sample. Gets? That's why inversely proportional siya. Okay? So if mas daghang labeled antigen, let's say labeled antigen or reactant ang nakita, it means that mas gamay therefore ang patient antigen or ang antigen or reactant na nasa imuhang patient sample. Okay? And opposite, if mas gamay ang na-detect na labeled antigen, okay, therefore, mas daghan di ay ang imuhang patient antigen. Okay? I hope na-get sa siya. Okay? I hope na-get sa illustration. Because again, it means that if daghan di ang imuhang patient antigen, so sila na occupy usually, uh, sila na occupy ano yung mga antibodies na nasa imuhang test tube. Okay? Gets? Pero, so, therefore, gamay na lang ang maka, gamay na lang na label antigen ang mubain sa mukhang antibody. Therefore, dili kayo siya ma-detect, di ba? So, meaning, less detection of your labeled antigen, it means that mas taas ang imuhang patient antigen. Okay? na gets ra inversely proportional. Alright? That's for competitive immunoassay. Why is it called competitive? Both the reactants, labeled antigen, meaning reagent ni mo, and your patient antigen, they are mixed together and they are allowed to compete 
magpaunhanay sila, okay, to bind to the limited binding sites of your antibody found on your test tube or plates. Okay? Alright, that's for competitive amino acid. Now, for the next type is your non competitive amino acid. So, when you say non-competitive, by the name itself, sorry guys, erase, erase muna, erase, erase, okay? <laughs> Alright, okay. So, for non-competitive amino acid, you use an antibody pa rin, but this time, there is no more competition, okay? So, let's say, you have an antibody na, example here, and that is known as your um, capture antibody, okay? And, you add then the uh, patient antigen, okay, which is the unknown, okay? And of course, the antigen will then react to your antibody. And this is antibody, this antibody is also known as your capture antibody. By the name itself, capture, yangi capture, okay? <laughs> All right, ayan. And we remove now washing, okay? We remove now washing, ah, oh, we remove now washing. We wash the, uh, the whole procedure, okay? We wash so that we can remove any unbound antigens. And then after, diba, let's say, ni bind ng antigen, okay? Another antibody is added, okay? Ayan. And this antibody now is your re labeled reactant or your label. And this is now uh, measured, okay? Alright, so as you can see, ang difference lang is um, your, your label, no? Label reactant is not dili sila dungan o pagbutang, di ba? So, nagpareact sa kadaan o imuhang antibody daan na naas imuhang test tube, okay? And then, patient antigen, nagreact sila daan. And then, after a while, di ba, magwash sa ka because again, to remove any unbound um, antigens ba or any unbound stuff. Then, after a while, after ni magwashing, dito na ka mo add sa imuhang reagent or your label which is another antibody. Okay? And usually, this is um, sandwich, also known as sandwich um, na immunoassay, di ba? Because you can see, ang antigen ni mo, <laughs> na sandwich siya, og duha ka antibodies. Okay? Alright. And this time, the amount of label is directly proportional to the amount of patient antigen. Why? Because, let's say, okay, and ano na lang, flat surface daw. <laughs> okay. Let's say that you have here mga antibodies ni siya, guys. Okay? that are already there sa imuhang plate or test tube. And then you have many antigens na ni-bind. Okay? Ako rang giana, guys. Ha? So, let's say, ana. So, therefore, di ba, this is the first step, non-competitive. So, after a while, mag-washing ka to remove any unbound antigens. So, therefore, ada na po ni mo next og labeled na antibody, which is your reagent or which is the label, which is ang imo i-detect. Okay? So, therefore, pag-add ni mo, so, mas daghan siyang antigen na na mabind. Okay? So, therefore, meaning, kung mas daghan na detect na label, it means that mas daghan po ding antigen from the patient ang present. Okay? I hope na gets siya. So, that's directly proportional. Okay? So, I hope na gets na ang difference between sa competitive and non-competitive amino assay. Alright? Lord, sana naman. Okay. Alright. Okay. <laughs> Ayan. All right. So that's for the non-competitive amino acid and competitive amino acids. So these are uh, the types of labeled amino acids based on format. Okay. All right. All right. And in both assays, both competitive and non-competitive, the labels okay that were added should not alter. Okay. It should not take part in the reaction in a way, and it should not alter the reactivity of the antigen to the antibody that to the antigen antibody that was found in the plate or in the tube. Okay? Alright. And it should remain stable uh, forever. Char. <laughs> for, remain stable throughout the duration of the process and also for a long period of time then. Okay? Alright. Ayan. So that's for based on format. Okay. Now we go now to the types based on label. Ayan. So may mga types based on label pa. So is it ano ba? Fling lang? Is it like long term? Char. Is it like Chaka chaka lang, chat chat lang, mga puyat puyat, pula, mga chat beats, ganon, charot. Okay, so again, different types. We have radio amino acid, you have enzyme amino acid, fluorescent, and of course, chemiluminescent. So, of course, they just differ on the types of labels. So, for radio amino acid, mugamit siya radio isotopes. For enzyme, mugamit siya enzyme. For fluorescent, mugamit siya mga fluorochromes or fluorophores, yes. And lastly, chemiluminescent, mugamit siya og chemical reaction na mu emit og light. Okay? Alright, so we'll go now, we'll go through each of this individually later. Okay? Alright, ayan. 
So th those are the different types based on label. And lastly, for the different types based on separation, kailangan ba siyang bulagon? Ay, yes, labeled na gani, pero kailangan pa mo bulag, Char. Okay, so based on separation, okay, first is of course hetero, het, heterogeneous, by the name itself, heterogeneous, hetero, okay? You need to physically separate, okay? Either through centrifugation, filtration ba, whatever. The different, um, yeah, from, you need to separate it from the free and the bound analyte, okay? So, pwede siyang, um, uh, yeah, Washing in a way that's the me that's the meaning. Washing needs siya og washing step. Okay, all right. Ang heterogeneous and ang homogeneous. But it's of homogeneous as one, di ba? You don't need to separate them. Ah, yes, naman. So you don't need to separate. Ayan. So asa manta ani? Of course, ito rasa homogeneous. Charat. <laughs> you don't need to be separated. Charat. Check lang. Okay, all right. So those are the difference based on separation steps. So heterogeneous and homogeneous. Okay, all right. Now for um, separation methods. Um, in the separation method, there are a lot, a lot of methods, and usually they use a solid phase vehicle for separation. So, example, test tubes, beads, plates, latex beads, and nitrocellulose membrane. So, what happens is, of course, same sa nahitabo here. So, these um, solid phase materials, dira mo, um, ah, yeah, that's the next procedure, di ay. Okay. <laughs> the antigen or antibody, guys, ha, pwedeng antigen or antibody. Ang gibutang diri daan sa imong plate, sa imong test tubes, gi physically adsorb siya sa surface, sa imong tubes, sa sulod or sa plates ba. And then after a while, um adani mo siya sa patient antigen or antibody, so magreact sila together, okay? And then after a while dito ka after sa imong reaction, dito na ka magwashing, okay? Ayan. Then ba, yeah, separated by physical means and again washing step to remove any remaining unbound analyte. So baka namoy mga Lahi yung meaning sa washing, ha? Naku, naku, guys. <laughs> okay, alright. Ayan. And for the last step is, of course, we detect now the label. Ayan. So, ato bang i-detect if ang inyo bang label is strong? Is it really legit? Is it mutual or just one-sided? <laughs> Ikaw na ba yung nakabalo na uyab mo? <laughs> like me, charat lang. Okay, alright. So, last step. Wow, nasakitan ko ato, Mark. Yes. Self-incrimination. <laughs> Okay, alright. Ayan. Last step is, of course, we detect now the label. Okay, because again, labeled amino assays, what we're going to detect you is the label. Because the label will tell you if there is a reaction na nahitabo, and also will tell you the concentration ba, the concentration of your antigen or antibody from the patient. Okay? Alright, so for radio amino assays, we count the radioactivity that was emitted. And for other labels, enzymes, fluorescence, or chemiluminescence, we... Absor uh, we detect that using absorbance, using spectrophotometer. Okay? Alright, ayan. And for the next, next video na, kay medyo kulang na ako ng memory, we'll start now with the first type of amino assay based on the labels. Yes. And that's what we're focusing, no, in this lecture. And that is your radio amino assay. I, I, I know you've heard about these mga types of amino assays, no? I mean, they have been mentioned siguro in your different subjects from first year to now. And we're going to focus now, in-depth discussion, <laughs> sana naman, okay, of these different types. All right, so I'll see you in the next video, starting, we'll start first with, again, radio immunoassay. Okay.